It's tea time for this family of Crimean Tatars. But one member is missing, Elvira's husband, Aktion. He was arrested several weeks ago, accused of organising riots, inciting violence and manslaughter. The allegations relate to clashes between pro-Ukrainian Tatars and pro-Russian activists a year ago, when Moscow took over the Crimean Peninsula. His wife says the accusations have been trumped up with one aim, to intimidate the Tatar community. Today, nearly every Tatar family in Crimea is living in fear. We don't feel safe in our homeland. There are disappearances and sadistic and violent murders. Native to the peninsula, the Tatars are Muslims who comprise about 13% of the population. Their history is marked by persecution, and in 1944, Joseph Stalin forcibly deported them to Central Asia for alleged collaboration with the invading Nazis during World War II. They were not allowed to return until the 1990s, but say that since annexation last year, the persecution has started again. Ilmi Umurov says over the past year, 10 to 20,000 Tatars have left the territory, while disappearances have increased and four people have been found dead in unexplained circumstances. In Russia, there's no freedom of expression, no freedom of thought. Loyalty to the authorities is mandatory. Having different opinions is not encouraged. On the contrary, you will be persecuted for it. This has created some problems for us. In January, riot police raided Tatar television channel ATR. About 50 Russian police searched workstations and employees, interrupting this report and seizing footage of last February's Tatar and pro-Russian clashes. Recent anti-extremism laws have forced ATR to self-censor, and the world's only Tatar language channel even avoids mentioning that Crimea was until a year ago part of Ukraine. We have no right to say that Crimea is occupied, no right to give a voice to people who call for demonstrations, which wouldn't be permitted by the authorities, and no one has the right to show such events on the air. Lilia points out that for half a century Tatars didn't have the right to speak and read their national language. The tragedy of history, she says, is now repeating itself.